Hello right back, this is Joe Plays Games, welcome to another Pixar video. Today we're going to be going over some biome information. If you don't know, there's going to be eight biomes to start with in Pixar. We're going to be talking about what they possibly could contain, what types of plants, what types of creatures, and massively we're going to be going in depth in some of the plants you're going to be seeing. I'm not talking just about crops to grow for your farms, I'm talking about plants that will help you defend your bases against other players, other creatures, as well as their uses in magic. So let's go for another Pix Arc informational video. So what prompted this video? Well, they have announced something called the Explorers uh, Guide, which is going to basically be little short little posts by the Pixar team on Steam and obviously hopefully on the forums once they get up and running and just gives us a little bit of information about some of the creatures, some of the, the worlds, basically just everything Pixar. This is the first one, it's detailing a dodo, the zombie and the raptor. Now we should know plenty about a dodo and a raptor if you played Ark Survival Evolved. However, if you haven't, I'm going to go through each and every one of these little things they talk about and why it matters because it's got information about the biomes. The dodo can be found in the novice prairies and grasslands. These silly birds don't offer much in the form of defence or offence, it's almost as though they were designed for beginner explorers in mind. So just like a normal base arc, Killing your dodo is not a big deal. It gives you a big source of meat and hopefully you get a little bit of a fired, 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 hide, 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 skin from it as well to make armor. When you play Ark Survival Evolved, if you've never played it, you can spawn almost anywhere on the map in certain areas and certain parts of the map. But the beach is normally the safest part, and that's why we call everyone a beach scrub. If you're making your base on a beach, you are a beach scrub. It normally means you're a bit of a noob. You're just starting the game. So, that won't have that in this Pixar. It's procedurally generated, remember. There's going to be no map exactly the same. The biomes are going to be in different places. They might not even have a big islands of water. It just might be smaller land masses. We don't know exactly how the procedural things will go, but the likelihood is it will have one or two of each biome in each map. It's going to be a large map. They are going to be massive. Remember, think about Minecraft. How many times have you said to yourself, I'm going to dig a big hole? How long has it taken you just to dig a tiny small hole all the way to bedrock? People are complaining or worried that they're going to run out of resources. You are not going to run out of resources in Pixar. I think it will be exactly like it is with Minecraft when they add new areas or new biomes. As long as you've not explored that area already, it will generate that biome in that point. Way back, way back when, I remember when they did start implementing different biomes and different features like villagers and you have to create a brand new map. That still may happen, but I still think they're going to just tack on the biomes. Now, I'm going to try and not say biome anymore because I feel like I've just said it 20 times. But that's one of them that we're looking at now. The novice prairies and the grasslands. So basically the scrub starting area. After that, we've got this bad boy, the zombie. Now, the zombies will be coming to feast on your brains, apparently, according to this post. They're not going to be very OP. You're going to be able to take them out very well. However, it's the biome that I'm really interested in. I've said it again. I'm not going to say it no more. The dark forest zone. Let's call it zones. Now there is a bit of confusion, there's a quite a few different areas. On the ARC wiki it's got a few different areas, in fact it's got more than 8, but everything I've read from the developers says there's not going to be more than 8 zones, biomes to start the game with. So to clearly answer that question about whether or not stuff will respawn, going way back, way back a couple months now for a tweet, they've said that some resources like trees and plants will act more like they do in Ark Survival Evolved and respawn over time. But if you destroy a block-based resource, it will usually stay destroyed. They go on to say each world is big, but there is a limited amount of space as well as certain locations that will always appear no matter how the world is generated. So it's exactly there I thought it was going to be, just like Minecraft, you are going to have to go further and further out or find really good places which will have some of the resources. But it's going to be a massive world, you're not going to run out. So from the early access trailer that got revealed for the Xbox launch, you can see a big choice and difference of the biomes. There are particular traditional stuff like you're going to have a desert, you're going to have a snow biome, you'll have underground lava caves, but it's going to be very varied in terms of what's in them as well. You can have things like bamboo forest, you can have all sorts of different little sub areas or zones in these bigger wider areas. I'm really looking forward to seeing and exploring how it all works, what you're going to need in terms of armour, different types, is it going to be like armor? with the temperature I've seen a lot of gameplay that shows the temperature is a factor so you have to be careful about how hot and cold you are but they do look really cool you can see like the magic or a dark forest biome here I think the magic and a dark biome are exactly the same thing 
So let's start taking a look at what we can expect to see in terms of creatures and the plant life. There's going to be a lot of water in the game. All the water creatures that you'd expect from Ark Survival Evolved are going to be in Pixar. You've got crocodiles, you've got piranhas, you've got frogs, all sorts of things. Giant massive mantas that you can build bases on. There's going to be so much to do in terms of getting these guys and you can tame them just like you do in Ark. You are going to need to put a specific food in them to get more bonuses, but however, it's not going to last forever. Now these are the giant piranhas attacking a poor player that's in the water. And then we've got more details about the snow biomes that are going to be coming here as well. You can see there's lots of snow blocks as well as blocks that will just have half a dusting of snow on them. And you've got the little symbol there. I don't think that's a snowflake. I think that signifies that the player is cold and you may need to get some warmer armour on. And you can see here there's some more of it there. And you've got these magical sort of growths. I think these are going to be like extra experience things or maybe they're stubs from trees because they look very similar to that. So maybe that's all that's left after a tree and that's what regrows. That would make sense going based off that tweet we just read that says that some trees will grow back. Maybe you can't harvest these types of blocks and that's the way that the trees will grow back. And here's a look at that magical forest sort of zone. And I think I'm right. You can see there, these are the types of blocks I don't think you're going to be able to harvest. It means that wood and trees and certain things will come back and back and back. So anything with this symbol basically means non-harvestable. It's the root of the tree, you can see them clearly in the bottom there. Now you can see they've got proper geared up here and we are in definitely a big snow biome. And then you've got the desert one, again what you would normally find expect, some sort of desert rock, desert sand and cactuses. And you can see they're quite big and vast and huge, just like in Minecraft the biomes can be massive and you have more than one of them in an actual game. Now this one looks much more swamp-like, I expect to see lots of smaller creatures, particularly things like the toads, maybe locusts running around as well. Now according to the Chinese website, which I had to use Google Translate to get a lot of the information from, we're going to go with some of these names, they're probably not exactly 100% right, but this one is called the Eaton Flower or Venom Flower. They're going to be found in the swamp areas, now I know this isn't particularly swamp, but this is clearly just to highlight and show you different stuff in a more open setting. So that means it's going to be good, the maps won't just look like a complete barren wasteland just like Ark Survival Evolved do. After a while on official servers they look awful because everyone has just been harvesting the trees and they take forever to grow back. Now onto the most exciting bit for me, it's the plants. More than just plant species Z, Y and X which are the three main types in Ark Survival Evolved which act like mini turrets that help defend your bases, there's going to be a much more choice and selection in what these plants do. They'll obviously harm you when they're out in the wild, but you can cultivate all of these different plants. Now I've spent a good amount of time going on Google on the Chinese website trying to decipher some of the translations. So forgive me if some of these are wrong, but this is what I've based it on. This one is the Eaton Flower and it's got venom. You can find it in the swamps. Not only will they attack you when you go right close up to them, they'll also release venom which attacks all enemies that are around it and that venom blinds you, so for a few seconds you won't be able to see. Now this one's called Ivy, and it's another magical plant. It's going to be divided into the grassland areas. Now it doesn't eat you like some of the other plants or do any damage. It does, however, do something else. It stops you from walking. The vines are going to literally stop you. They're going to grow out the ground or out the plant, and they can make and make basically slow you down as you're walking past it. The idea being that when they catch on to you, you're going to become its food slowly over time. So you're going to have to get away from these guys. Then we've got something I think is called the Nepenths. Now, these are more like insects traps. And again, they're going to be found in the swamp. They will throw massive seeds out into the open that can cause damage to you. They'll also make you run slower and move slower as well. You can see here we go, here's the spore attacking a player. Now, this one is a mushroom plant. These are going to be in the magical areas and they will expand and grow. They do a bleeding damage, so once that spore hits you, you'll continuously lose damage by dropping blood. So be very careful when you start seeing these plants expand because that's when you know they're gonna release their toxin. Now this one looks the creepiest of all. This is man apparently called a magic ling. What this one does throws huge massive poison balls at you, so any targets in range, it will do that. You can see here, there it goes. It looks like an umbrella corpse sign from Resident Evil up there. So it's going to be pretty interesting walking around certain areas and these plants are all just out to get you. Now this one's a giant fly trap, a more sort of traditional one. They'll try and bite you when you go past and that's generally what they will do. 
When you attack this plant though, it apparently heals itself by closing itself up, so you won't be able to do any damage until it opens back up again. Now we've got the ancient Wang Lian, I'm sure that's going to be changed, is apparently the most poisonous. Now this isn't a plant that you have to worry about getting too close up, because it's going to take you out from distance, it's got like a whiplash tendril that catches you. But one of its best uses is that if you can actually gather this plant up and plant it on your farm, it will actually revive people around you. So not only does it kill creatures, I think it also replenishes their health. And this is really interesting stuff. This is where I thought the idea for Plants vs Zombies was coming ages ago when I'd done a video talking about mini games. Screenshots I saw were these zombies and creatures attacking these rows of plants and it just looked like, oh my god, they've put Plants vs Zombies in it. But what it turned out to be was someone actually doing that just to show what you could do or how you could defend a base. And you can see all the plants in action here, all grown and cropped. So you can take them plants the seeds and grow them yourself. You're obviously going to need a lot of water and you can irrigate stuff and you can see they've got like a water pump in it and lots of traditional piping. And we've got water reservoirs as well that will keep everything water running nicely. It's really interesting, really cool to see. The fact that some of these plants will keep the other plants alive, that is really interesting. So farming and making sure your base has got more natural plants rather than just turrets could be a big key factor in surviving in the game. And I'm sure that these plant speed seeds do a lot more than just defend. I'm sure they'll probably give you abilities or you can use them for crafting other stuff. Now we've got some more friendlier plants. You can see here all the pot plants. You've got like a little mini cactus there. There's all sorts of little lotus. And then the typical crops that you would use to make either kibble or feed yourself. It's really, really interesting stuff. And it really makes you wonder what else there's going to be in these different types of biomes and what to expect. So we will have to go to certain places like the magic biomes to get these plants. You can still see a few of them just in the distance here, like the, the, the Umbrella Corpse one, we're going to call it. And lastly, just because I missed this a couple of days ago when they put this out as well, weather is going to be an important factor. Just like we spoke about that you're going to need to be careful being too hot or too cold, you're going to have to worry about lightning. There are specific pieces of armour you're going to have to wear to defend yourself against attacks from the map and the weather. If you don't have this actual nifty little helmet on, you could take damage from that lightning. And you can see here, look, it's just literally made someone knock them out or killed them. So again, that's another really important feature about the maps, and that's why I'm so excited about Pixar. It's going to be really different. I can't wait for Pixar. I hope you guys can't too. Make sure you go and join my Discord. You can find the link in the description down below. We've got a Pixar channel running where you can talk and talk and show us everything you're excited about in the game. So there you go, that is all the information we know about biomes. Expect the bog standard stuff like desert and snow, but also expect some really cool features like the magic, uh, the magic mushrooms, the magic biomes. I am Jay Blaze Games. I will see you ratbags for another Pixar very soon. Don't forget to like, make sure you go and check out all the other Pixar videos in the playlist, and I can't wait to get their hype running for the 27th of March when Pixar finally launches. Until then, ratbags, I'll see you later.